So we're on chapter 18, and on, at the end of chapter 17, uh, Sam the lion runs into Cassius as he's heading home. I'll get there in a second. Can you please shut your computer? Thank you. Uh, so as Cassius runs into Sam, or I should say Sam runs into Cassius, Cassius is telling Sam that he's flawed and that Heidi no longer wants him. Do you believe Cassius? No. No, he's, he's too conniving, too scheming for me to believe him. He set this whole thing up. And Sam's like, I'm not flawed, you're flawed. And Cassius is like, no, you are flawed. And he backs Sam up and Sam walks right onto a trap. trap. And that trap clamps around his leg. You can see him howling for pain. <laughs> and unfortunately for Sam, he is stuck in that trap. We are on page 107. We're at chapter 18. Uh, so talk about insult to injury. Cassius tells Sam that Heidi doesn't want him anymore, that Cassius is now her dog, or she is Cassius's human. Uh, and to, to a dog, that seems like a below-the-belt kind of uh, hit like that. That's, that's, like, that's just mean, saying that the human took over another dog. And so that's where we left off, and as we leave that part of the story... Sam is stuck out there in the snow with that uh, coyote trap, or I think they called it a beaver trap. That claw is wrapped around his leg, and uh, man, poor guy. A steel leg trap has him. Chapter 18, on page 107, there's a little picture there, and it looks like that's Heidi crying in the window, which tells me she probably really misses Sam, or at least that's what I infer. Chapter 18, Abyss. A cold dawn broke slow and heavy over McLeod Heavenly Acres. Downstairs, Uncle Hamish sat silently at the breakfast table, alone in his thoughts. Violet brought him coffee, which he took without speaking. Mm. Coffee. Violet laid her other thin hand atop his unruly hair and gently smoothed it. Upstairs, Mrs. Beaglehole stood stiffly in the threshold of Heidi's bedroom door, peering in as if waiting in the large window seat before a dark sky Heidi sat with knees curled to her chest arms holding them tight she stared out dully over the now white Vermont hills with spent eyes there was simply no more moisture left in her body what's it mean to have spent eyes I like the way they wrote that uh, dry eyes. Uh, basically your her eyes are Okay, spent as in dry, maybe blurry, but what's that tell you has happened if she's got spent eyes? Not a lot. If you have spent eyes, it looks like you're looking into vacuums. Not quite. Go ahead. Yes, you cried. She was crying, and she was crying so much, she's got no more tears left, right? Like, all of the tears are gone. Why has she been crying so much? Because she misses Cassius. No. Cassius? Cassius. Sam. Uh, Sam. She misses Sam. Uh, because that whole situation of Sam being shot and she thinks that Uncle Hamish shot and killed Sam. Remember, he didn't really kill him, but he shot the gun to make it seem like he had to put Sam out of his misery for having rabies. But that's not really what happened. But Heidi is here and she's very upset. Her eyes are spent. She's upset for nothing. I think she's got a reason to be upset, but she doesn't really know what's going on. She stared out dully over the now white Vermont hills with spent eyes. There was simply no more moisture left in her body. Cassius approached the girl silently. He sat and laid a long nose into the fold of her lap and waited. Heidi's hand released her other and dropped slowly down as if thinking on its own. Her fingers alighted on the smooth brow of the poodle and remained on his head. Cassius closed his eyes and smiled. Thank you. As did Mrs. Beaglehole, still, wait, still watching from the hall, she slowly closed the door. Nobody in the McLeod house at that moment knew that only a quarter mile away, two men stood just outside the estate walls, peering down at their beaver trap, trying to decide what kind of critter 
or what sort of critter they had caught. Did you catch that? Sam is so close. He's outside the walls of the estate. So he's like right there at the property. He's just on the other side, trapped in the beaver trap. Looks like a rat, said one. A blue, a blue ribbon big rat, said the other. <laughs> a three-legged rat now. Said rat's got naked tails. This one's furry. When Sam let out a low whimper, the two trappers knew the creature was indeed something else. They pulled the two halves of the trap apart and they lifted the limp dog away. One wrapped a handkerchief around Sam's smashed leg and secured it with a rubber band that had kept his matches attached to his box of cigarettes. They carried Sam to their truck a mile away and they placed him on the seat between them. In the warmth of the cab, the fog of Sam's mind slowly cleared, although the sights and sounds around him still seemed like a dream. And in that dream, he watched through half-closed eyes as he was driven into town where, where more men met the truck and huddled with the men who had found him. The second group of men handed over a small stack of money to the first and then carried Sam over to a different truck, the back of which was filled with small steel boxes. Sam's nose told him that they also contained dogs, unwanted and lost. He was placed inside a cage and the door closed and locked. Still too weak to stand, still too weak to stand, Sam peered through the crack in the steel door and watched the forested hills he'd explored with Heidi over recent months change to those far less familiar. After many hours, the truck pulled up to a tall chain link security fence that surrounded a vast array of very dark buildings with few windows. A sign next to the fence read, New England University Research Labs. As the sun set, the skies again became laden and the snow began to fall as the truck pulled into the complex. The dogs in the boxes around him sensed a change and one by one, each began to utter low, mournful howls. Through the doors cracked, Sam watched as the gate closed behind him in the world beyond, the world of sunlight and dandelions and a girl's laughter and everything he had known that was right and fair and good receded into the distance. He knew with absolute certainty, like dogs know that a distant storm is approaching or that a stranger isn't to be trusted. He knew that that world was gone forever. 19. Man, I don't know about you guys. I feel really bad for Sam. Like, I feel terrible for him. This poor dog and all that he's had to endure, which is a fancy way of saying, like, had to put up with all these horrible things that have happened to him. Um, all these things that he's had to endure. He was taken from the tarmac on the jet plane, right? Like, the jet takes the dogs off, and they're, like, loading the dogs to Mrs. Nutbush, right? And Heidi shows up and lets him out, and he's like, I'm free. He eats french fries for the first time. He joins Heidi in the car. Um, I remember that part where he's driving the <laughs> the uh, the thing on the um, on the tarmac, like the cart for the uh, the luggage carrier or whatever. Um, and so he ends up, and, and the airplane's following that. By the way, that's pretty awesome. So he jumps into the back of the car. He gets in Heidi's bag, um, and here he is at McLeod Heavenly Estates, like the best place for dogs ever. Turns out Sam is this hundred eighty thousand dollar dog, so he's special. And he finds Heidi, and Heidi and Sam get along great. Uh, they win Blue Ribbon Best in Show for the best dog ever. Uh, they beat Cassius, and life is good for Sam for a moment. And then Cassius sets him up. Sam is set up. He's shot and then put out to die, to die but they actually don't kill him. He's taken to the pound where he shows up with all these other dogs. He escapes the pound. He goes back to the house. He actually makes his way to their estate. And Cassius stops him. And then Sam gets that leg trap on him. Uh, that chops his leg off. Spoiler alert. You can see on the cover. Uh, Sam loses his leg. And now they're taking him to... What was the place they were taking him to? Um, I I got Boom New, New England University Research, Research Labs. Labs. What Which do you think they're going to do to the dogs Research. there? Cut off his leg. I mean, Research. maybe. What? I got two. I got Go ahead. Why on both both of his this side legs they're both cut off? Um, it's not. He's got two legs like this running in front of him, yeah. and then the other legs. That's how dogs run. Like his back legs in front of him, you can just barely see it. But he does have a soup ladle for a leg. That's kind of weird. Yeah, he does. Chapter nineteen. How are we doing on time? I think we can do chapter nineteen. 
12.03 and 28 seconds a.m. The following year, how long was he there? A year in this research lab. The following year, spring came early to the leafy hills surrounding university research labs before burning out in its usual fiery finale in the fall. And it did the same next, it did the same the next year. How many years is that now? Two. Two, Two years. No. There will be no details recounted here to describe the indescribable events experienced by Sam and the other animals living beyond those. Ugh. Two terrible walls during this time no good will come from dwelling on such horrors and they are best left to the nightmares of feverish children and the dark imaginations of bullies who pull the wings off of flies when the leaves returned the third year it was in the warming rainy night air of april that our story and our dachshund returned three minutes 28 seconds after midnight actually We finished 19. We did.